What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to continue and look at additional features released with Geospatial Creator, which I announced a few days ago by making a video about it. And also today, we're going to concentrate on another AR core feature called a Streetscape Geometry API. It sounds really cool and it actually is really cool because it allows you to get geometry information from the buildings, the terrain that we have in our surrounding and you don't have to be outside to do that. I actually made a demo that allowed me to basically do X-ray vision because I was able to see the buildings that were around my area, which is really, really cool. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you what requirements are gonna be needed in order for you to build a prototype from the start to finish. And then by the end of the video, you should have everything that you need to build your own experience. So. I jump into my computer and I start working on it. Basically, I just duplicated the scene here, just special demo and created a streetscape demo. And it's basically what we had before, except that we don't have the anchor and also the origin component that we'll need for just special because this one is gonna be specifically just for a streetscape API. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and add a new component here and it's gonna be called a just special a streetscape manager. This is a custom mono behavior that I just created. It doesn't have anything in it. I'm just going to save us the time to create in the script. But basically we're gonna be focusing for the most part on that and then we'll get back in here and add some other components. While we're here, I also created a UI just to save us time for doing that. There's really no need for me to cover UI because that's beyond this tutorial. Just know there's going to be three different options in here and also a slider. This is so that we can show the buildings, it's gonna be a toggle. If we wanna show the terrains, we also have a toggle for that. Anchors means that we're gonna be able to place an anchor right on a actual building. And then what that's going to do is basically going to place an object and that object is going to be spanning many, many different spheres. And then we also can toggle these. Basically, if we set it to off, we're just gonna have this projectile that we're gonna be able to shoot at different buildings. Go into your AR core extension config, and this needs to be enabled. This is going to basically tell AR core that you're going to be using Streetscape geometry, and therefore it's going to be sending you geometry information. And this is gonna be all bound to these AR core extensions. You can go into this component here, which is the AR core extension config, and that will map to that file. If you didn't watch my previous video, make sure that you watch it because it covers some of these core components and how to get it set up. This one is going to be basically the AR S3 Escape Geometry Manager. That's going to be what we need to access. And I think I named this one S3 Escape Geometry Manager. on the very bottom. So I'm just gonna do the on enable. It's going to do the binding of the Streetscape Geometry Manager. If you go into this manager, you're gonna see that there's going to be a Streetscape Geometry change. And this is gonna be executed anytime the API tells us that there's a change in geometry. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit tab. And then I think this one, I'm just gonna call that just to keep it short. And it's just going to be this method that it's going to execute. And this object is going to have all different parameters that we're going to need. So we'll go back into that and just, we'll just come back into that in just a minute. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be binding to the on disable. And then we're just gonna go ahead and copy this line in here. And then we can just go ahead and remove that so that we don't listen to that. Geometries, there we go. And then we can say, okay, you know what? If this gets, you know, an added, I can just go into for each one of those. And then we can just call it G for geometry. And then we can have a new method called at render geometry. It's gonna be the one responsible for adding the actual object that is going to render the geometry. So we'll need to create that one. And then we're also going to need one for update so that we can update the position and also the rotation based on the pose. Update render geometry. And then we'll also just pass in G. You can name that if you wanted to just name it geometry. You can just name it geometry if that makes more sense. And then you can do that same thing. I'm just gonna keep a G. I think in my case, it's completely fine. And then we can just say destroy in this case, render geometry if we get anything that gets, you know, that gets removed. So we'll just do that. Then I'm gonna comment these ones because we need to implement 
all of those methods. So let's go ahead and start with the actual uh, render geometry. So it's gonna be our first one. And then we'll go back, come back into these and also these ones that we need to re-enable. So this one is going to be also, and just make it private, void. And then it's going to be taking one actual geometry and that geometry, it's going to be a AR street escape. I think, I think that's how you say it, street escape geometry. If I'm saying it incorrectly, let me know in the comments and I'll make sure that I learn how to say that. But anyway, so this is gonna be the first thing that we do. We need to say, okay, we need to check if this is being added to our cache. And we can do, we can check for that by looking at the key. And then each geometry has a trackable ID. So that's going to be the key for us to finding out if this is being added to the cache or not. We're getting the geometry, we're checking our dictionary, we're creating our object, and then we're adding that to our cache. So once you have that, we can basically uncomment that line and that should allow us to create what we need to create to render them. It won't be correct because the we also need to update the pose because if we're moving the camera around, then the geometry is going to change position, including the rotation. So you need to also do an update. So that's what we're going to be doing next. So let's go ahead and focus on the update. And then the update, I call it, just gonna cheat and copy that. And then we're just gonna do exactly what we did above it. So it's gonna be that, and then I call it, I think I call that argument just, just geometry. So in this case, we know that we need to make sure that this is already in the dictionary. If it's already in the dictionary, I know that it has been created. So we can just say that this is going to be, we're gonna be checking to see if the key is already in the dictionary. And if it is, it's easy because we know that we can update the post of that object. So I can just say, in this case, I want to get it out of the cache. I'm just gonna say render, in this case, geometry object, geometry object. Basically, I'm trying to keep the same naming so it makes more sense in my head and also hopefully it makes more sense to you as well. And then this is how we can get it out of the dictionary. And then all we really need to do is we can just copy these two lines in here and then that should update that render geometry object position and rotation based on the new geometry pose that we got from this method. So now we can go in here and comment that. So I'm just gonna say, in this case, I'm gonna call a render geometry and then we're just gonna be passing that the render geometry. So that should take care of those scenarios. And then the last one that we're gonna do is going to be destroy render geometry. So I'm just go ahead and copy that as well. And then go here into private. And then I'll just do exactly the same thing. We can just tab because AI is trying to help us out. And this one is gonna be very simple as well. We can just, in fact, we just copy that area right here. And then that's going to be checking to see, okay, if that trackable is also there. And then I don't need to update this because we're actually going to be destroying that, but I'm gonna be removing that from the cache. And then we can just tell it what trackable ID we're going to be removing. And then the last thing that I can do here is I can say, well, that is getting removed out of our cache, but I also want to destroy the render object that I created. So we can just say destroy, and then this is gonna be the render object. So the next part that I wanna show you though, is going to be another method that we're going to have to use to destroy the render, basically all the render geometry. But we also need to uncomment this. And that's going to be the method that we need to do is going to be destroy render geometry. So we can go ahead and work on that next piece and that's going to be also private, void, and then we can just, it's not gonna take in anything because we're, we're going to be trying, we're actually going to be destroying everything and then re-adding everything again. And then what I can do here at the very end is we can say, I want to go ahead and clear my cache because we are going to be starting over. So if we follow this along though, let's say that now we can uncomment this, we can uncomment this. Let's say that we have a bunch of buildings already in memory, and then we also have a bunch of terrains already in memory. So we're gonna call into this method, and this method is gonna say, oh, I wanna get all the ones that are already in cache, and I'm gonna destroy every single one. Well, this is already being tracked, right? This is gonna be tracked, but we already have a building already added, and this was already executed. So how do we recreate it? And that's what, what I ended up doing is the update, it's going to be, we're destroying the game object that we created, 
We're now destroying the trackable that the system is keeping track of. So what you can do is you can say, well, it's not in my cache, so I'm just gonna go ahead and recreate it. That's kind of how I'm handling and it works well. I'm just gonna say, okay, if I'm touching the screen and I'm also have a ray cast and the ray cast hits the streetscape geometry. So we can say this geometry here, we can just also pass in the touch position. And then I'm also going to be passing a reference to to the hit. So this right here is an extension because it came from the features that we added. And you can see here it says extension. And if we were to click on it, this is all coming from the AR Recast Manager extensions that AR Core provides with the new implementation. So just know that that's where that comes from. If you don't have the tools and you're just using vanilla AR Foundation, you're not gonna see it until you add the version that I show you in the previous video for AR Core extensions that have the geospatial component in them. Anyway, so now that we have that, we can say, we can get the hit pose, and then it's gonna say, give me the first hit, and then give me the post information, and then we can instantiate this object, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna pass in the object that I want to spawn, and then I can say, hit pose, give me that, and then give me the position, and then he pose, give me actually the rotation as well, allow placement, and then in this case, I'm gonna set it to false until you basically we end the, the touch. So I'm just gonna say if, in this case, we can also, I'm just gonna say, in this case, I'm gonna say end it. And then if we end it, then we're going to be allowing this to be true. And then we can go ahead and create a new instance. The first thing that we need to do though is this component is to, this is the one that Google needs to get from the AR session origin. So we're gonna add that AR and then a street escape geometry manager. Just make sure that you add that because without that, it's not going to give you geometry information. So I got this build and you guys can see that it shows the buildings. If I look around, I ended up turning off the lights so you guys can see that results as well. And if I look and move my phone up, you can see how everything is just changing automatically because the pose values that are coming through with the position and rotation are also getting updated. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, about using the geospatial tools, either what I show you in the previous video or on this video, let me know in the comments. Thank you.